What's up everybody? It's Tuesday morning. <sighs> Who knows what we're gonna get into today. I know we got to get the uh, the truck unloaded and get the tools unloaded out of the trailer. Um, it's all still loaded up. We haven't even unloaded that stuff yet since we got home from uh, Kentucky. But unfortunately for me, I overslept this morning and uh, I'm running way behind. I was supposed to get up this morning and haul stone and my wife had to leave very early this morning for a uh, doctor's appointment. Uh, she has a torn meniscus in her, uh, I think it's her right knee. And uh, so she had to go this morning into the hospital for, well, she's here, she just got back. So she had to go to the hospital this morning for a pre-operation checkup. So she left real early this morning and that's not normal for her. She works from home, she's always here. And um, so when she left this morning, um, she kind of snuck out and I was asleep and I didn't wake up till 10.30 or so. So I'm, I'm way behind. As you can see, I didn't shave today. <laughs> Looking a little rough. So me and old June Pup are on the road. We're headed to get our first load of stone for the day. And um, believe it or not, I feel like I do some of my best work in the cab of this old dump truck. My baby. And, uh, you know, when I'm in the truck, I got a lot of time to think. Uh, for the most part, undistracted. It's been this way for years, all the events that we've done and a lot of the ideas that we've come up with for different videos and uh, the short films and pretty much everything that you've ever seen on Street Racing Channel. That if, if I had any part in it, the idea stemmed from me riding up the road in this old dump truck. Because you got a lot of time to think. You know. So, the other day I was driving up the road in the old dump truck and I thought, man, it would be really cool uh, to combine a few different elements of what I'm doing here, like answering questions. Like, we'll do that Q&A thing where people ask questions and I answer them. And that's fine, but I, I feel like it's a little bit boring. But I think that if I can combine some of the Q&A stuff with actual video of what I'm talking about, I think it would be a lot more entertaining for people to watch. I think people would enjoy it. They seem to enjoy me telling stories for whatever reason. So here's what we're going to do. You know, I, I've, seen, I've seen a few really good questions. And I think I'm going to try to answer some of those questions with showing you old video off Street Racing Channel about some of the things that we've done. And today, the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to take you back to the pad, New Orleans. The first trip we ever made to the pad. And before we do that, I want to explain a couple things. First off, that was the first big trip we ever made out of the state of Ohio to go street racing. Like, we would go to Kentucky and West Virginia and stuff, and, and that's that was cool. You know, we had a good time. But that was the first time we really ever stepped out of our element. We drove 16 hours, basically, one way, to New Orleans, Louisiana, and raced at the pad. Well, that's a different world down there, okay? That's a totally different world down there. We've never been there. We've never done it. We had a lot of people back then, uh, you know, I would comment on Facebook and say, well, we'd like to do this and we'd like to do that. Really, I wasn't trying to brag. I was trying to inspire people. 
people to step out of their element. You know, there was a lot of things going on back then when street outlaws was hot and everybody was on the internet wanting to talk about doing a cash days and getting people from out of state all together to race. And mostly everybody was just on there running their mouth on keyboards, but to us, we really wanted to do this. I mean, we were serious about it. And a lot of people doubted us. And I would have too. I mean, honestly. Things have really changed over the last, you know, three or four years. Things have really changed. But anyway, let's head to the pad. Let me show you what it was like on our first trip to the legendary street race spot in New Orleans, Louisiana. It was November in Ohio, colder than hell. We were ready to get out of town, though. But before we could get out of town, we had some work to do. At this point, the old truck still had the original leaf spring bushings up in the front spring perches, and it had been giving us trouble. The little truck kind of had a mind of its own. It always wanted to either go left or right, and you could really never tell for sure what it was actually going to do. We were using homemade traction bars from a friend of ours out in Oklahoma. They worked okay, and we'd been pretty fast on them. But the truck was inconsistent, and we couldn't drive 16 hours one way to go to the legendary race spot in New Orleans with an inconsistent truck. Something had to be done. So we wanted to get this taken care of before we left. I've had a lot of people ask, what's the scariest thing you've ever witnessed with that truck, with your son driving it? And by far, I have to say, watching a little truck try to grab a hold of a track or a decent rubber patch with these old rubber bushings in the leaf springs was extremely <laughs> scary to watch. You could never tell whether it was going to go left or right. So before we left for New Orleans, we made sure we had the aluminum bushings put in the leaf springs. And we went into Jags and bought a brand new set of Caltrack bars for it. Unfortunately, the Caltrack bars and the rubber bushings weren't the only problem. We had some severe problems with the anti-roll bar that was in the back of the truck. It was a very cheap, inexpensive kit that we bought back when we really didn't know what we were doing. And we had really not installed it properly to begin with. And we band-aided it up and tried to make it work as best we could. But in reality, it, the truck really didn't come around until a couple years later when we put a good TRZ anti-roll bar kit in it. So anyway, once we got the new suspension on, the new cow tracks, the new aluminum bushings, and we felt like we had the truck pretty well squared away, we hit the road. It was a long trip, 16 hours one way, pulling the trailer. Billy's old Silverado did the best it could. It was a 5.3 automatic, and I really didn't like that truck. It was a gutless pig as far as I was concerned. Drank gas like crazy for the size of the engine that it was. But we made it. We got down into Georgia, and you could... Uh, you could feel in the air it was so much warmer and so much nicer down there in the wintertime than it was up home. And the I-10 bridge area was just incredible. It was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. Miles and miles and miles and miles of bridge out over open water. It was beautiful. So anyway, we make it down there. We, uh, we get to the meat spot. The meat spot is... Uh, little 24-hour gas station down there. It's about 15 minutes away from the, uh, the race spot. And uh, Bobby Ducote's there. And uh, he wasn't racing. I think he was going to race that night. Something happened. He couldn't get the car ready. But anyway, Barry Nicholson was there. The Godfather, you remember, might remember him from some Street Outlaws episodes and No Prep Kings. He drove the black Camaro called the Godfather, a first-gen Camaro. Anyway, Barry's there. He's kind of giving the sermon, conducting the driver's meeting. And uh, Boosted's there. 
and uh, Tony McKinney's there, good friend of ours from down around Dayton, and uh, Dean Carnes is there. <laughs> This was my first experience, my first first-hand experience being around Dean Cards. Dean is a freaking character, man. He's a blast. I wasn't a big fan of Dean's at first, but man, I'm telling you, if you hang out with that guy long enough, you can't help but fall in love with him. He's just a character. You didn't affect the race. Right. If a part flies off your car and you've affected the other guy, that could have potentially beat you, then you probably get disqualified. What about fucking deers or anything, Dan? We got any wild animals? No. 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 <laughs> okay. So that's all neutral ground? Just eat one of them and keep going, right? Alligator, <laughs> alligator. They do have uh, pigs yeah. and alligators. They're out there by you from here. Just because we know what happened on the road. Watch out for the gator. Hey, real yeah. shit. Y'all yeah, the ones that ain't from down here? There's a fucking canal on the side of the road. Yeah. On the right side. There is alligators in that motherfucker. There is snakes. Be careful. So if I get if wild boar runs out in my lane, I get a rerun? No, you don't fuck <laughs> just I'm just making sure. Sure. If I got lift because motherfucking wild hogs in my lane, what the fuck are you gonna do, man? Alright. All right, guys, that's a bit serious question. So after the driver's meeting, we head to the race spot. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> there was at least 15 or 16 trailers deep headed into the race spot and the police are already there with lights and sirens on warning us to get out everyone just continued on unfazed the crowd of people there was humongous i could not believe it i'd never witnessed anything like this in my life billy was just in shock we were half scared to death we didn't know anybody but bobby dakota and bj but everybody there treated us like family. It was incredible. We had a great time. Unbelievably, even though there was hundreds and hundreds of people there, there was not a single problem. BJ runs that place. Everyone respects him, and they listen to what he says. If he tells you to get the hell back, you get back, or he'll shut the whole thing down, and he won't let any cars race until everybody moves back in safe distance. So I'm going to be straight honest with you. We were both scared to death. This was unlike anything we had ever witnessed. And we were in front of the most people we'd ever really raced uh, in front of on the street. And a lot of people knew who we were from the YouTube channel and were making side bets. You know, they were thinking, these guys aren't for real. They ain't never been to New Orleans. They ain't never raced people like this. They don't know what they're in for. But in reality... We were pretty well prepared. It just so happens that our test spot that we test at up the road from our house is almost identical to the starting line at the pad. Now, even though we were well prepared, there's a good reason why people were betting against us. We drew a hitter in round one. Mr. Todd Spires out of Mississippi in the Wall Street Mustang. Now, if you don't know who Todd Spires is, <laughs> let me introduce you to the man. I'm Todd Spears. I got a little data on the street. I believe I can clean it up and make it go faster than it did the last time. Todd Spears made a great pass and beat Doughboy. Now, we just so happened to get lucky and got paired with Todd on the first pass he'd ever put on Wall Street since he'd put the car back together. So Todd wasn't 100%, but Todd, even at 50%, is a worthy adversary. 
We met Todd for the first time that night, and I'll never forget him. Incredible person. Proud to know him. As Billy rolls the line, you can see Bobby Dakota thump his fists on the hood there a little bit and give Billy a little confidence. That was really nice of him because these guys all know each other. They're like family down there. I'll never forget it. As BJ backed up and was ready to bang a light, I laid my hand on the tonneau cover on Billy's truck and began to say a prayer. I said, Lord, please watch after my son and keep him safe. I lifted my hand on the tonneau cover and sent his ass right down to there. Just as Billy finished his pass against Todd, the police showed up. They had actually been there for a little while. When Boosted GT made his pass, he had a little bit of trouble with the trailer tire. And as he loaded his car up, the police officer pulled up and actually stood there and made sure he was okay. Kept him safe while he was changing the tire. The area that this place is in is a really rough spot. It's not for the faint of heart. Billy ended up drawing the bye in the next round, so we took a bye run in the right-hand lane just to see what it was all about. We didn't think it was as good. It's a good thing we did that because the next round we drew right lane against this Malibu. Billy had made some shock adjustments and some adjustments to the boost ramp on the boost controller, and it worked out very well. The truck made an excellent pass down the right-hand lane, and it was probably the fastest pass we had made so far. So that win in the semifinal set us up for the final round appearance against none other than Baller Coop. The big Baller Coop out of Texas, well known for street racing in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, is one bad hammer, and we were going to have all we could handle. While we took an L that night against Baller Coop in the final at the pad, we had made a name for ourselves. We'd be back. <laughs>